chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, starting at verse 11, and the story goes to verse 32. But, as you know, the son asked for his inheritance, and the father gave it to him. Now he went to another country, and he used his inheritance on riotous living and ungodly women. And when he had no more money, all his friends were gone. So he was hungry. So he got a job serving, I mean, feeding the pigs. And he was so hungry that he wanted to eat the food that he was giving the pigs. But he said within himself, I can go back to my father's house. I can be a servant there. Not a son, but a servant. And little better than this. So he went back to his father. And let's pick up, let's see. On verse, let's see. Um, thank you. Okay. We'll start at verse 18. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. So the son was humble before the father. And he arose and came to his father. And when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. So this shows what the father thinks of the son. <coughs> the son has just left, and blew the inheritance. But well, what does the father look? He loves his son. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said unto his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive, and was lost, and is found, and they began to be merry. So, what happened was, the relationship was dead. He was out of fellowship with the father. So, when you're out of fellowship with the Lord, in a way you have died spiritually. There's no way you can be alive spiritually away from Jesus, away from living for Him. You may say to yourself, I'm still a Christian. I don't go to church. I'm still a good person. I'm not reading my Bible. And I'm not saying that you're not saved. I'm not going to say that. But I'm saying that you can enter into death spiritually if you're not in continual fellowship with the Father, with the Son, with the Holy Spirit, you have to continue to be with Him. <coughs> Your life is in Him. Amen? Amen. Let's continue. Because the Lord is getting us to a point. Now the elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of his servants and asked, what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father has killed the fatted calf, because he has received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and entreated him. And he, and he answering and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, he didn't say my brother, he said this thy son was come, 
which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It's so interesting. The father had two sons, and both of them missed it. First, the first son wanted his inheritance. He didn't understand the relationship with the father, the continuing fellowship. One thing, asking for his inheritance out of the right time, before time, like sometimes we want, we want our blessing now. We don't want to wait for it. We don't want to wait on God's timing. But God has a perfect timing and he wants to give the blessing. But his son paid the father for it. So he gave it to him because he, the father knew he was going to learn a lesson. So sometimes for us, he will give it to us to teach us a lesson. In the Old Testament, <coughs> Israel, the Jews were in the desert and they were asking for something. And God gave them something. It was quail. And many of them died eating the quail because, of the, because they just ate too much. They wouldn't eat it according to God's word. And the Lord knew the spirit in asking. So sometimes you may receive it. But if you're not receiving it in the right spirit, if you're not receiving it according to God's will, it may hurt you. But hopefully it will teach you a lesson. Now, the second son, he did not sin as far as serving the Lord. But he missed it as far as understanding his relationship with the Father. Because the Father said he got mad because he said, thy, you know, thy son. He didn't say my brother, he said thy son. <coughs> so he was upset because he was serving his Father in deeds, in work. But he didn't understand the, ser the, the relationship with the heart. Because it's more than just what you do. It's more than just ushering. It's more than just singing in a choir. It's even more than just giving an offering. It's your heart. You have to have a relationship with Him. You have to know Him. Everything you do for the Father is because you love Him. Amen. It's a relationship thing. It's not like going to IBM. I'm just going there for a salary. No. This is a family business. It means something for me for things to happen the right way. Anyway, the second son missed it. And the Father said something that's been so, so awesome, is that you are ever with me. All that I have is thine. And the Lord is saying to you, and on the internet, for you who are saved, all that he has is yours. The Father is saying, let me repeat that, all that he has is yours. So how do you receive what the Father has? First, you have to be in the right relationship with First, you have to be in fellowship, and you have to know Him. And once you understand and know Him, then you will receive the things that He has. Amen? Amen. So, mm -hmm. the Father, we're missing out on so much. Yes, our name is written in the book. But we're missing out on so much. In America right now, uh, there's a housing crisis. There's an economic crisis. In some areas, depending on where you live, there's a crime crisis. There's a health crisis. I mean, there's all of these crises around. Now, let's go back to the child. He is safe in his father's house. How do, our, how do we as Christians receive things? Do we feel safe when we hear something on the news about um, swine disease or this new flu that's coming out or this new mosquito disease? Do we feel safe? Do we feel safe when it's saying crime is going up the skyrocketing? Do we feel safe when there's an economic crisis and people are losing their jobs left and right? Do we feel safe and the housing market is going down? What is our perspective? Do we just have the same fears as the world does? Or do we have confidence because we know who our Father is? I see, this you have to have more than, reading the Word is so important. But it's more than just reading the Word. You read the Word in faith, you read it in relationship, knowing who your Father is because 
even if you read it, you got to know who wrote it. And once you know who wrote it, I say, yeah, my father wrote this. I can believe it because I know I can trust my father. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what the news says. I don't care what my friends say. I believe the Lord. And don't get me wrong, there are situations you may have to deal with, but through God's provision and through his wisdom, he will get it to you in time. Remember the prodigal son. He didn't want to wait to the right time. We have to wait to the right time. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, that's what the Lord has for you tonight. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for what you've done and what you've given. We thank you that all our needs are provided through you, through your Son. And Father, we just ask you, Lord, to help us to understand how to receive. Help us to understand our relationship with you and how to enter in into a, into a perfect union with us. Yes, we're saved. But Lord, we want to fellowship with you every day. We want to hear you. We want to know you, Lord. We want to know you more than we know our fathers, our natural fathers or mothers or our wives or our children. We want to know you more <coughs> or better than anyone else. So, Father, as I have preached your word, I just pray, Lord, that you would just speak to your people yes. here in this place and on the internet. Yes. And just share with them how to restore the relationship, refresh the relationship, renew the relationship, or even just increase the relationship. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.